Okay, uh, it was a pretty good session on the data. So up to this date, uh, REST API, this automation solution has a very good solution uh, in the uh, market, but GraphQL is emerging and there are quite less solution. Uh, most of the GraphQL community and developers are facing the problem that how they can make a GraphQL automation. And uh, today we have a session uh, on that. Uh, Peter Thomas is the distinguished en engineer at Institute and he's a creator of Karate Test Automation Framework. He's going to share a lot about how we can make the race in GraphQL test automation better and better for the for creating values for the customer. Okay, Peter, uh, welcome to the API days. Hey, uh, thank you, Shreya. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's, it's a great. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, we are ready to go and I'll jump off. Thank you, Shreya. Uh, all right, uh, welcome everyone to the session. Uh, I'm Peter, I work for a company called Intuit and I have been with Intuit for around eight years. Uh, around four years back, I happened to create this uh, solution for test automation or specifically API test automation. Um, so it's open source and uh, over the last four years, and I'll show you in the next few slides, uh, some data points as to uh, why it is compelling. Uh, I think it is quite popular. Uh, there are a lot of companies using it actually. Um, and you know, I, I would like to show you some demos as to um, how it looks like, what you can expect. And uh, hopefully, you know, there's something if you're not using already that you can evaluate. Um, and and one of the things, you know, and I'm glad that API JS gave me this opportunity because, you know, there's a lot of talk about APIs and, you know, integration between systems, but I think uh, test automation and quality control is somewhat overlooked. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be here to kind of, you know, fill at least that perceived gap. So as I said, uh, Karate is an open source project for uh, test automation. And interestingly, it started um, as an API testing solution, but as I will talk through, uh, it has a, a few other aspects to it. Uh, the, the term DSL on this slide stands for domain specific language. Uh, I'll show you code examples and then you'll see what I mean. Uh, and in case some of you in the audience have uh, experience with Cucumber, uh, I just want to call out because it's a very common misconception that Karate has nothing to do actually with uh, behavior driven development or BDD. Uh, although it looks somewhat like it, but just think of Karate as a very specialized programming language for um, you know the business of testing uh, REST APIs and GraphQL APIs, as I will talk through. So uh, in case you thought Karate was only an API testing tool, here's a surprise. Uh, Karate has uh, test doubles or API mocking. And this is really important because as you all know, especially when you get into microservices, you will have a lot of these services around that you don't own, but you need to test your service that probably depends on multiple other services. And this is where uh, this really um, becomes very useful. Karate has performance testing. I'll talk a little bit about it. I don't have time for a demo. And interestingly, Karate can do UI automation as well. Um, in case you're wondering, right, is Karate popular? I think the answer is a big yes um, in terms of usage. And uh, we're very proud of the fact that ThoughtWorks actually deemed it um, you know, interesting or popular or compelling enough that it featured in, on their tech radar, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It featured twice. And hopefully, you know, we are moving slowly towards the center and we might end up in that bullseye, hopefully in the next, you know, iteration of this tech radar. Uh, I'm going to take a little detour and, you know, give you my personal spin on, you know, how APIs came to be in the form that they are today, primarily. Uh, we all know there's a lot of JSON slash, slash rest around. Uh, but if you, you know, rewind time back to around the 2000s, um, you know, we had, Web experiences started out being very, what do you say, static. Uh, you would load a web page, you'll make an HTTP get, some HTML would come back, and then you click a link and the entire page would refresh, and then you move to another page, so on. And then around you know, 2001, 2004 timeframe, you know, Google came out with Google Gmail, and I think the term Ajax uh, became a thing. And now, and, and that just changed the game. Now people expect that web interfaces do this thing called partial DOM updates. Uh, you should, you click 
something you do some action on a page and everything is super interactive uh, you know people talk in terms of a rich client experience rich user experience and the world is never was never the same again and for those of you who have been around for a long time you might find the screen this was how gmail's first version looked like and it, it it got rave reviews obviously because when you clicked on you know one of the items in your inbox the entire page did not refresh you just snappily saw uh, just the contents that you wanted start loading in the page and google maps came around the same time and that just added to this whole uh, game changing thing and i think uh, today uh, you know all interfaces you know are like this i mean people expect no less and what i'm trying to say here is that to give you a feel as to uh, how the current state of you know json rest apis came to be where uh, as you can see here everything started out by you know the browser would make a request you would have some kind of server side html rendering framework uh, people might remember gsp and asp and things like that and then the server returns html which you the browser doesn't do much work it simply has to render it whereas today we have this big blob of javascript that sits on the browser and you can think of single page applications like react angular and so on and the backend has become a little thinner it's just serving um in response to the browser it's just serving back json or pure data okay so this is where we are now and uh all your online experiences you know when you are on a shopping cart or on gmail or you know doing an amazon checkout or swiggy uh your front end whether it's mobile or web uh, is just making a whole bunch of uh pure data calls getting json back and then the front end as you can see in this green the part here on the right that has to do a little bit of heavy lifting to convert that json into html and then render it so where does karate fit in this world where everything is a service uh, which you see on the left uh karate fits here where you can bypass your front end and that is a big deal and i'll talk a little bit about it uh karate will make calls to a service pretend to be your client um, and get the json back and then do the business of validating it which i'll show you a demo of one thing i want to point out on the slide the implications are karate tests are going to be a lot faster than ui automation tests and some of you i'm sure are struggling with you know you you have a team of uh, folks writing selenium or similar kind of automation and over the last few years especially with karate coming on the scene i believe uh, there is a renewed interest or there's an there's an awareness or understanding that maybe it is better to focus all your test automation effort on the back end on the rest api side uh, you'll have tremendous advantages like it's going to be a lot um, less flaky um, these are going to run faster and if you look at the left hand side of this diagram right uh, you pretty much you know um, high up on the test pyramid in a sense and uh, there are a lot of moving parts everyone knows a browser is actually a huge piece of engineering and the less you involve that in your test automation flow the actual better it is so with that i am going to talk you through a hello world example of what a karate test looks like and the first thing to call out uh, is you know even before i i, I build any of the slide uh, one thing to note uh, if you are new to karate is that this is not like any programming language that you are used to um it is not java it is not c sharp it's not ruby javascript or python it's something very weird and different and it's for a reason and i'll point out some of the highlights you can express json in a karate test like this very elegantly you don't see the double quotes and you don't need quotes around the name here like i'm pointing to uh, this is exactly how javascript programmers deal with json on a daily basis and uh, this is great in, in fact if you have as a programmer try to you know inject json into maybe a java program or a dotnet program you would know that you'll need to do that uh, very ugly escaping of backslash a uh, double quote and so on which you don't see here uh the reason i call karate a dsl or a domain specific language is uh, i would like to call your attention to the second word on each line here and i'll point to them uh, url request method status and path and those terms should immediately make sense to any to anyone in the business of apis or rest apis or http rather um 
it makes sense this is very crisp it reads well it's um there's no syntax noise in all of this and that's a good thing for maintainability and now we get to some of the real big um you know capabilities or differentiators that karate has um what you see on this line is a match there's a match keyword and we are actually saying that whatever response came back from the server we want to validate that all the key value pairs all the data elements are as expected uh and this actually works even if you have deeply nested json which is the case when you get into real life you know uh, transactions and there is a twist here you can see this hash not null uh, and and what that is doing is that uh, this solves one of the biggest pain points in api testing of any form which is the server typically would be returning um random values or uuids or things that you cannot predict like date stamps and time stamps and what karate allows you to do here Uh, is say that hey i want to check everything is as expected expect except uh, these troublesome values like the not null the id field that you're seeing here this is a big deal not many other frameworks um, have that capability and last but not the least what i'm showing you here is that you would never test an, an api or a, a single get or a post or a request in isolation you would always always chain multiple requests together into some kind of an orchestrated flow and this is real functional end to end testing this is the only way you can actually validate uh, that your system is working perfectly as a business use case that uh, the user goes through or in conjunction with other systems and what the great thing here is um is the hat uh, the response that came back the id is actually plugged in to the path of the next response you can plug it into the body as well if you wanted and karate pretty much allows you to do this chaining of requests take uh, whatever uh, data came back in the previous response and plug it in to the next uh, request so with that i'll do a quick demo um and hopefully everything is fine um and I'll switch to Visual Studio Code for a minute. Uh, what you are seeing here is Visual Studio Code, and one of the takeaways for all of you, right? In case you're wondering, do I need to be a Java programmer for my team to be able to use Karate? Um, no, uh, we have first-class support for Karate and Visual Studio Code, which is one of the most popular IDEs right now. Uh, what you're looking at is actually a GraphQL test. Uh, we are going to make a request to this url this is uh, on the internet and uh, this is the query so karate allows you to actually inject uh, in this case this is a plain text slash graphql query and i think the the most important thing that karate does for you is assertion so we going to actually say that uh, whatever data came back and uh, one of the characteristics of graphql which is really troublesome to deal with when you are testing is that it happens to be deeply nested um when i run this you'll see what i mean and you can see right you can you need we need to grab data saying data.user.posts.data the first uh, array element and so on uh however karate has these amazing uh, ways in which you can query for the data in a large json payload that came back uh these two dots here you see this double dot this is actually json path notation which says no matter what depth uh the posts key appears in the json let me just go and grab that but let me run this here so you'll see what i mean so hopefully this demo works it's connected to the internet we are making a request to the internet and uh, we are actually running two scenarios because there are two scenarios or uh these scenarios map to a logical test case uh and i think i will show you the report um and this is what a karate report looks like uh, by the way karate is really really good at parallel execution of tests which is very important because one of the things we really expect from a, a large suite of tests is that it should run in parallel so even if you run in parallel karate gives you this report which is a good thing and one of the selling points of karate is that you see the http http request and response in line in the html report this is super useful for uh, troubleshooting or um figuring out where your test has failed and you you can see here right the request the, the response that came back is this very deeply nested um uh, you know set of data dot user dot posts i actually pretty printed it here so that it looks a little better and what we're going to do is that we're going to validate that uh, an id came back which is one and the id number 2 and title has to be this as a combination 
And there you see uh, we ran these matches and all of that, um, you know, that I just talked about uh, happened. And I just wanted to repeat the fact that rather than have all these long, verbose, brittle, you know, data access, um, you know, selectors, if you want to call them that, uh, you can use these shortcuts like double dot and, and do your testing while at the same time being a little resilient to uh, whether your schema changes and so on. Uh, here I have an example of um, using variables in a GraphQL query and the other uh, thing here, because one of the common questions you might have is that, you know, can I read from files? What if my JSON request and response are like huge? Do I really want to bloat up my test? And the good news is that if, you go, if I go back to my test, uh, you can actually read from a file um, if you see, sorry, uh, this line number 39, you can see we're reading from a file, which is over here, which is a plain old uh, GraphQL file with a variable ID, which uh, is passed as part of the test. All right, so with that demo, I want to just, um, uh, you know, talk about one of the advantages. Why should you choose Karate for your API testing strategy? And the reason is because Karate gives you this combination of uh, API testing, which I just showed you, mocks, which um, you know I, I talked about the advantages of why you need mocks, especially when you have a lot of microservices and you really have dependencies on other services which you want to simulate or stub out and, and so on. But when you talk about performance testing, uh, haven't you always wondered, right? If you think about how you've done performance testing in the past, uh, you would typically, you know, towards the end of your, you know, delivery date, towards your, when you're near your delivery date, rather, you'll suddenly scramble for, oh my God, we haven't done performance testing. How do we do it? And then you'll call in some SWOT team, you know, some experts uh, on Gatling or JMeter or similar kind of tools. And then they will have to go and rewrite all those lovely scenarios that you probably already had as uh, regression test suites. Uh, you'll need to rewrite them in a different tool, run a different tool, and then you know you would get your performance test results. And haven't you always wondered, what if you could take your existing functional API test suite and just rerun them as a performance test by just adding that multiplication factor of a load model? And that is what Karate gives for you. Um, Karate Plugs has a very deep integration with Gatling, which is one of the best load testing open source um, tools on the uh, that's available. And, and this is a great time saver and one of the reasons why a lot of companies and teams have chosen karate. So I just wanted all of you to be aware of that. It's one more thing for you to consider in your evaluation uh, when you look at karate. Um, just a couple more slides before I end and I'm opening it up for questions. Um, uh, one of the things about karate, uh, as you expect from any testing tool, is data-driven testing. So what you see on the slide, especially the bottom here, you can actually uh, define, express, you know, all your different data, uh, you know, boundary conditions and so on as, um, you know, this this very user-friendly, human-friendly uh, tabular form, uh, which comes from Cucumber, which is one of the inspirations for Karate. And you can see in the report that uh, for each iteration of that row in the, you know, the data-driven, you know, source, in this case, that table, uh, you see a different test case run, and you can actually see that we plugged in into this placeholder here, which ends up being in the title of the HTML report, which value of which particular scenario we or sub scenario we were covering. Uh, so, the other point I wanted to do, wanted you to take away from this slide is that if you see that line number four here on the top, uh, we are actually calling a Java a class. We are actually reusing some Java code that somebody else written, uh, somebody else wrote. And your takeaway is that this, you know, many testing frameworks, especially things that look like karate that are data or keyword driven, uh, fall short when you have some extreme edge case or some very complicated custom scenario because, you know, the framework simply cannot scale. It's not flexible enough. You won't have any such concern or problem with karate. And the reason is this, what I'm showing you, because since you can call into Java code, and it is so simple to call into Java code. Uh, it's just this one line where you can actually load a Java class and actually call methods on it, uh, or call the new method on it if you really wanted to. Uh, this is great. It just means that any Java class can be mixed into a Karate test, and you will never you know, ever find yourself constrained by limitations of the framework. In short, if you can write it in Java, you can test it, or you can use it for testing anything using Karate. 
Um, last slide, I just uh, you've already seen the slide on the left, which is a typical um, you know UI test. But uh, one of the great things about Karate because it mixes API testing, which is calling services, uh, and your front end. As I started this presentation with, would be invariably calling a bunch of services. Uh, one of the great things about Karate is that it has UI testing built in and it has API testing also built in, and you can combine all of these things into a single test. Uh, and you can even use mocks, right? So you can have your your front end actually calling karate mocks, uh, and this gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility. Because I'll give you one example, right? A lot of test suites today, if you have Selenium or browser test automation suites, uh, you would be spending a lot of time probably on that login sequence, right? Typing in the username and password into the screen every time you want to get into the main uh, dashboard of your experience. And what you can do with the hybrid setup that I'm talking about here is that uh, you can make a sign in using an API and you will have a SSO API in every you know situation. Uh, that's just going to take a few microseconds and then you'll get a token and all you need to figure out is how to convert that token into a cookie, which is how most of you know uh, web authentication works. And you actually are going to save a tremendous amount of time. Uh, this is just one example. By looking at the picture on the right, I'm sure you can creatively think of many other ways in which you can kind of mix uh, you know, UI testing and the concept of mocking. You can actually extend the concept of mocking to the domain of uh, user interface testing. Uh, so with that, and I just wanted to leave you with this slide, which actually talks about all the things that Karate does. And it's quite a lot. Uh, we have a Docker image. We have Maven artifact. We have a standalone binary in case you really don't want to you know, use IntelliJ or Eclipse or, or uh, heavyweight Java tools. Uh, so this is available on the uh, on the home page of Karate, which is here at the bottom of the screen. So go and check it out when you have time. Uh, we have the Twitter handles by which you can keep up to date with you know what is happening in the project. And with that, um, you know, happy to stop here and definitely take questions. Over to you, Shreya. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Peter, uh, for sharing. So I just uh, show uh, that uh, Karate API testing is also supporting the web socket. Is uh, does it? The question, if I understood right, is whether it supports web browser automation testing. The answer is yes. Uh, we in fact support uh, Chrome native. And when some of you may have heard of Puppeteer. Uh, we have the exact same protocol re-implemented from scratch in Karate, so we have that. We have very good support for Chrome. If you're worried about cross-browser support, we have WebDriver, which is uh, it's more popularly known as the Selenium you know, protocol. Uh, so we support Selenium uh, directly, uh, which means we support Appium also for mobile, which is a surprise, but I'll be very honest here. The mobile support is a little bit experimental, uh, but we would love for anyone in the audience to step forward and contribute and help us make it you know, proper. And we also have Playwright um, as an adapter uh, option, which is very interesting. That also is experimental, but some of you would know that Playwright is uh, very new. So short answer to you, Shreya, is a big yes. Uh, we have multiple options of you know uh, browser automation, and um, we're just getting better. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think everybody would love to know about uh, your own story. That what was the problem that you faced uh, in your past, and why you started building Karate. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. As I said, four years back, uh, I was in a particular project that was using a lot of homegrown Java codes. Uh, and, and this is very common all across the industry. I've seen this in many places. And I think a lot of you in the audience would relate to this. Uh, so this specific team um, was using the Apache HTTP client uh, Java code, a Java library, to do all these raw requests and responses. And I saw uh, a lot of time being spent um, on this validation, right? And people were writing extra Java code, basically converting all the JSON payloads into POJOs or Java code, because that's the default approach that comes to the mind of any Java programmer. And mm -hmm. if you look at Karate's approach, it completely bypasses that. You're just working with plain JSON, which is exactly how a browser talks to any web service. Uh, so yeah, that just clicked. And I really wanted to solve this. It was something that you know stuck on my mind. And I was uh, that was the version one of Karate, which we open sourced. So that's the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, does Karate GraphQL support each uh, languages and platform? Like, does it support Node.js and C Sharp and Python? Uh, the short answer is yes. I mean, because Karate operates at the HTTP slash JSON layer, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, right? In fact, you just saw me do a demo of calling some 
GraphQL service. I don't know whether it's written in uh, C sharp or, or you know Node JS or whatever. We just made a HTTP request and we got data back, and that's karate sweet spot. Uh, that said, of course, if you wanted to do some of the things that I talked about, where you wanted to extend karate by writing Java code, uh, you you need to be a Java programmer and all that. But short answer is absolutely doesn't matter whether your UI or you know whatever runs in your browser, or whether that service, whether it's GraphQL, REST, or SOAP, whether the backend, uh, it doesn't matter what the backend technology or platform is. Karate will just do its thing like it always does. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, Peter, thank you very much for sharing about the karate. And uh, it's, it's, it was amazing talk. Yeah, thank you oh, very thank much. Thank you, Shrey.